what's going on with you my name is rock and if you are unfamiliar with me at um if you are unfamiliar with me at all i am one fourth of the group or the collaboration that we call the frag illuminati the frag illuminati and we come to we come to you every sunday on youtube and bring and talk to you or have discussions regarding everything fragrance related so that would be myself uh bernie better known as be easy leonard better known as um g man and andre which we never know who he's going to be from week to week and again like i said my name is rock and um if you're wondering why i am here so low today is because what we're doing is we're going to branch out a little bit right what we're going to do is we're going to be describing and you notice i said describing not reviewing fragrances that within our collection that doesn't doesn't get a lot of play within youtube or doesn't get a lot of play within frag Com, doesn't get a lot of promotion within Fragcom, but these are great fragrances nonetheless, and we want to shine a little light to them. So it's not going to be so when you hear from us, and basically, and 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 definitely on a solo level, we're probably going to be promoting those type of fragrances that are within our collection that you don't hear every day on Fragcom, but are great fragrances nonetheless. I've been blessed to be able to be the first person to go ahead and bring this out. And so we're going to go ahead and get started and get this on the road. So the first fragrance that we're going to do is going to come from a fragrance house that is new to the Fragcom community. Right. This fragrance house came into the Frag game blazing. It started back out in September and October and it came out blazing. Right. And this fragrance house is none other than Mind Games. Right. All right. Mind Games came out. They came out with their initial release of 10 fragrances. Now, get this. These 10 fragrances are power pieces within the chessboard, right? Okay, so you and anybody that knows chess know you have a light side and you have a dark side. So Mind Games came out and they used all the power pieces within the chessboard, meaning you have a king, a queen, a bishop, a knight. A rook on either side. You have black, uh, the dark pieces, which represents dark fragrances. You have light pieces, which represent light fragrances. So what I'm going to be bringing to you today, now, mind you, I am going to leave um, leave a link um, where you can look at all the pieces or all the um, all of the uh, fragrances. That came out within Mind Grames. I'm going to put that underneath the, uh, underneath our link here. But today, what I'm going to be talking to you about is um, talking to you about is the one fragrance that we're going to talk to you about, and that is called Blockade. Right? Let me show you the picture here, and I'm hoping that I can get a good focus on this. But if I can't, don't worry. I'll put a card up or the picture there so you can actually get a chance to see. But you do get a chance to see how this bottle looks. It is in uh, a beautiful presentation of blue with a little wood grain on top. And if you notice that the pieces, I mean, that the cap is a um, is the representation of the bishop on a chessboard, right? So when I'm putting this cap back on, it is magnetic. It is um it is secure on the top, but I don't recommend holding it like this. I'm doing it like this just to show you that it can, but I would never recommend to do that not on any fragrance, right? Okay. So this is um the and the name of this fragrance again is called Blockade. It represents the bishop the white bishop on the chessboard and if you're not familiar with the, uh, what the bishop what the bishop does there are two bishops for each side on each team on a chessboard and a one bishop 
moves diagonally, I mean, attacks diagonally for, frontwards or backwards on its opposite color, and then the other um, bishop attacks frontwards and backwards diagonally on its own color, okay? That's how that particular piece moves and attacks in a chess game. Now, uh, within the presentation of a mind games box, it does have a little card, a little description card that tells you what um, the why they named it blockade and what is the significance of that particular chess piece. And it does that throughout um, every particular fragrance within that series, right? Okay, so I'm not going to get into that. So what I'm here to describe is how this particular fragrance smells, right? Now, due to its light color, we can go ahead and assume that this fragrance is um, catered for, to, uh, is, um, let me gather my thoughts, that it is catered to be a daytime scent, a warm weather scent, a fresh scent, a light scent, right? Okay. And so, I do have a test strip, and um, and to be honest, it's my scent of the day, so I pretty much know how it smells, but I'm just going to get a fresh smell to, you know, to kind of describe and let you know how the itemizer works and go from there. And um, trust me, I don't want to spray too much, because this shit is expensive. All right. All right. Okay, so let me tell you about the top notes of this fragrance. But before I get into that, what I do want to say is that if you heard anything about this fragrance, if you heard any rumors about this fragrance, or if anybody described this fragrance to you, most people are going to tell you that this is just Aventus with mango in it, right? I can't argue with that, but I can't 100% agree with that. Because when I... when the reason why I don't want to 100% agree with that, because I do not want people to place this in a, um, a a pigeonhole where they feel like that this is another Aventus clone. This is nothing like an Aventus clone. This does its own thing. Okay, so of uh, yes, it is mango instead of pineapple, but you also have tomato leaf, pink pepper, and bergamot up top. All right, so tomato leaf, not very popular within Fragcom. You do not hear a lot of fragrances that come that have a note of tomato leaf in it. So it's not going to be a note that's very easily, I mean, very able to easily describe. But what I what I get from it is a um is a little earthiness, and what I'm thinking that it's there to do. Is to balance out the mango in this fragrance, right? Because the mango in here does start off kind of sharp. And coupled with that tomato leaf, coupled with that um pink pepper that brings a little spiciness into this um into this thing, it brings out that sharpiness, that tropicalness, that that fruitiness that just makes this fragrance pop, right? The bergamot in it, it would bergamot in it just brings out a little bit more tropicalness into it that gives it that that feel where people will think it leans into that Aventus space but this fragrance does its own thing now this middle notes is where it gets a little bit more floral right because you have mango blossom you got watery cyclamen uh, cyclamen i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right you got star anise and you have lavender now, and what this does is it settles down that fragrance to the point where it is getting it getting it ready for the earthiness that's about to um about to ensue, right? Um this is where it gets this is where it does its own thing. This is where you can forget about all of the Aventus references, right? Aventus is smoky. Aventus has uh Aventus has uh, is smoky. Aventus has hints of rose in it, right? Aventus has vanilla in it. This does not do that. This goes straight into an ambery, leathery. This has oud in it, right? It's very well blended to the point where you don't smell the oud at all. You don't smell the oud at all. 
But what it does is that it turns into this into a completely leather fragrance that you can wear in the summertime. That leads me to that portion of this description, right? This is a fragrance that you go that that screams summer, that screams spring, it screams vacation, right? So any instance that you would wear a Ventus, you would wear this fragrance. Now, Leonard, be quiet. No, I'm not going to the laundromat with this particular fragrance. What I'm doing is I'm throwing on my t-shirt and jeans. I'm wearing this fragrance. I'm throwing, I'm going to the club. I'm wearing this fragrance, right? If I'm going somewhere a little sporty and I'm at an outdoor event, I'm wearing this fragrance, right? Okay. And so you get that versatility. It's t-shirt, it's, it's t-shirt and blue jeans and, and, and gym shoes, or it's slacks and um slacks in a button up. Right? Can you wear this fragrance to work? I think so. I mean, I would taper down my sprays if I'm gonna wear this fragrance to work, right? But the only drawback that I would say is that I wouldn't use I wouldn't consider this a showstopper formal formal wear fragrance, right? I would go with something different as far as that is concerned. I don't consider events as a showstopper formal wear type of fragrances, but some folks do. But I I, I will draw sh um, shy of saying that. I would just keep it in that casual realm. I would keep it as a clubbing fragrance. I would keep it as a social outdoor event uh, um, um, uh, where in... Um, I would lightweight wear it to work. It would just depends. Now with this particular fragrance, I would not do more than six sprays. It would it does push out. It will push out for the first couple of hours that you are wearing it. I would even give it a third hour. Um six full hours of complete projection. Uh, complete projection the type of person I see wearing this is because it does have that. And I won't, I'm not going to say a, a, a Ventus DNA. I'm going to say a Ventus feel, right? Because it has that a Ventus feel, I'm going to say that um, anyone from 21 and up would wear it. But I would basically say 25, 27 and up. And the reason why I will say 25, 27 and up is because of that price tag. This is... This is 340 this is at least $350 a bottle, right? This is very new fragrance, so it's not being discounted. You can find it at Neiman Marcus, and I think uh, Soul Avant Garde may have some, and I think that maybe um, Beverly Hills Perfumery, but don't get me wrong. I mean, do your research on your own to find out where that's at. If I find some, I can link it down at the bottom of the description of this video and let you know. But um, but it's not cheap. It's not readily being sampled out or decanted out, this, that, and the other. So if you can find a sample, I would recommend that you do that first. But it is, in my opinion, a very mass appealing fragrance. It's kind of hard to say unless you just don't like the flavor. If you don't like tomatoes and you don't like mango, then I can understand you not liking this fragrance. But other than that, it's a very mass appealing bomb. Just like uh, quite a few others that I have sampled from the House of Mind games. Uh, within this series, I'm probably going to review a couple more from Mind games. Because in my opinion, Mind games have came out of the gate swinging, right? For their first release, they have put out some bangers, right? Now, I got an idea for their second release, right? And so, if they're going to continue with this games theme, so maybe the um, the next release should be the properties of uh, the Monopoly board, right? Now, if y'all use that, I want my check. I'm from the east side of Detroit. I do not play about my money. I want my check. But, Look, but yeah, but I can see that Monopoly, where you got Boardwalk, you got Park Place, you got Kentucky Avenue, make peace, make fragrances that sur uh, uh, surrendered by, uh, I'm sorry, surrounded by the pieces of the Monopoly board. I want my check. 
<laughs> but <laughs> go ahead and do that. But we are going to continue along with these series, right? That's what I got for um, Mind Games uh, Blockade. Uh, don't forget to watch us on Sunday. I'll be back with the fellas, Bernie, G-Man, and Andre, whoever he is this week. And I will see you next week. And you know how I get down with the Illuminati, y'all. Peace.